Right, well, another Banggood kit here. Um, I order quite a lot of kits in one go because, I mean, they're not expensive. And um, so I order a whole load in one go, but I, I tend to forget what they are. So um, I'm not entirely sure what this one is. We have got um, a, a lot of surface mount LEDs. And I mean a lot. So we also have a um, plastic acrylic sheet with um, paper protective cover on it. That looks like it's black. So uh, that's obviously a hole for each LED, I should imagine. Bag of bits. I'll look at that in a minute. Um, and quite a lot of uh, plastic casing which is I don't know if it's got protective cover on it but it's uh, yeah it looks like it has uh, I don't know I'll look at that later but there you go um, there's also a diffuser sheet which is like a big sticker um, so obviously I would imagine that will stick on there and then diffuse the LEDs I'll have a look at that I've had those on other kits before and they're not, not that good um, and a single plastic backing, I should imagine. I don't know what the pink sticker is. I would imagine that is to reflect the colour of these LEDs. Um, and the power cable, USB typically, uh, with a mini USB. That is, uh, as I say, fairly typical. Now, we have the dreaded surface mount. Uh, what have we got here? Not an awful lot on this actually. Uh, it's got some um, touch uh, controls, and I imagine that one's for mode and that one's for up down and so on. Dreaded beeper. Um, so let's have a look at the um, components that make up this board. Take them all out like that. So. We've got the hardware for putting the uh, case together. So let's pull them out. Uh, we have the horrific buzzer, as always. We have a. Oh, it's not a transistor, is it? Um, I don't know. Lighting here is absolutely appalling. Okay, um, there's a couple of little transistors, surface mount transistors. Is that going to focus? Yeah, a couple of little surface mount transistors. Battery holder, no battery, but fortunately I've got some of those kicking about. A uh, little surface mount capacitor. The mini USB jack and a surface mount chip, which hopefully isn't um, static sensitive. If it is, I've just destroyed it. IAP, typical stuff. And what else? We've got another surface mount chip there. And a bunch of resistors. Uh, uh, yeah, resistors, any caps? Yeah, a few caps there as well. Um, and one of these, these are, yeah, those are, those are some, some more resistors as well. Um, and on the back of the board, well, if you're wondering where all the uh, LEDs are going to live, well, that's where they live. Lots and lots of them. Hence this uh, almighty great strip. So what I've got to do is, um... Just track down the, um, oh, there's an inductor. Is that an in Oh, no, that's another, no, that's the cap. Okay, um, so another cap. So I need to track down the um, instructions so I know what resistor goes where. I could probably work it out, to be quite honest. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but um, what I think I'm probably inclined to do is to fit the, uh, the LEDs first. Nothing seems to be focusing at the moment. Uh, so fit all the LEDs first 
uh, and then flip the board over uh, and the LEDs will make it a flat surface to work on. Whereas if I populate this board first and then put it down to work on, it's just going to wobble about all over the place. So um, that's probably the way to go. All right, so I'm going to track down the instructions first and um, take it from there. Okay, right, now, if we have a look, a close look at this board, you will see that there are six pins for each LED. One of them is oval shaped, the rest of them are rectangular. Now the idea is that you first of all put a blob of solder on the oval shaped one and then offer up your LED. Oh, which I've just lost. Uh, up to the solder uh, and then heat it and trap the LED in. And then you go around and solder the other five pins. Now you'll see on the LED that there is a little notch on the bottom right there. And that is the position for the LED to be connected to the oval shaped pin there. So we're going like that. So you can see that the actual connectors on the LED itself are very, very tiny. Like that. And that is going to be a very interesting thing that's trying to solder, to say the very least. So, what we shall do is I'll get myself set up and we'll try soldering one of these in, and then I shall spend the next 20 years probably soldering all these other ones in. Boop, assuming I don't lose the LEDs in the process, which I just did there. Let's go hunt that down. Okay, right, now, if we have a look, a close look at this board, you'll see that there are six pins for each LED. One of them is oval shaped, the rest of them are rectangular. Now the idea is that you first of all put a blob of solder on the oval shaped one and then offer up your LED, oh, which I've just lost, uh, up to the solder uh, and then heat it and trap the LED in. And then you go around and solder the other five pins. Now you'll see on the LED that there is a little notch on the bottom right there. And that is the position for the LED to be connected to the oval shaped pin there. So we're going like that. So you can see that the actual connectors on the LED itself are very, very tiny. Like that. And that is going to be a very interesting thing that's trying to solder, to say the very least. So, what we shall do is I'll get myself set up and we'll try soldering one of these in, and then I shall spend the next 20 years probably soldering all these other ones in. Boop. Assuming I don't lose the LEDs in the process, which I just did there. Let's go hunt that down. Right, just to quickly show you what I've done at this point, I've gone through the entire board and I've um, placed solder on all the oval pads. So I'm kind of going to treat this like a factory production line and get all the um, LEDs done um, a row at a time. Okay, so that's the way I'm going to tackle it. And 
problem I have is my eyesight isn't brilliant um, at all. I wear glasses and they're uh, quite hefty prescription. So what I shall be using is that guy to help me see things a bit more clearly when I'm hitting the solder. So I'm going to try and get that first row populated and um, see how that goes. Right, well that's the first row populated. Um, one of the issues to consider, unfortunately, is the case of the LEDs melt very easily if you touch it with the hold it, uh, soldering iron. So, yeah, one or two of them have been um, a bit damaged um, and they may therefore not work, but I'm not going to know any of this until I power it all up. Um, the other thing is I've um, used some flux. Um, so I just dab a bit of flux, flux on the connectors before I solder them and that makes a much better connection so that's worth doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish populating all those LEDs. So that'll take a while but once it's done it's done. Okay so I'll come back once I've finished that. Right they're all installed. Um, each LED is now hopefully correctly in place. Um, obviously the pads are very tiny and uh, therefore after I've done soldering I use a jeweler's loop just to uh, have a look at the solders, uh, solder joints just to make sure there's, uh, well, that they're connected and more importantly um, that there aren't any bridges. Um, very, very easy to bridge the solder joints. The other thing I did was I changed the tip on my solder iron, uh, soldering iron to a much finer one. The one I was using before was um, just way too thick for these uh, reasonably tiny LED connections. So, the next thing to do is to install that little lot. Um, so, uh, I shall start preparing for that. Right, well the next thing to do is to install the mini USB um, jack. And what we need to do with this is get basically get rid of the data lines. So you'll see there that there are five connections and what we need to do is to get rid of the middle three because they're the the data lines and they will can they will uh connect to this to these pads on the pcb and you can see that there's two pads there and then you've got one two three which aren't actually pads they're sort of just representing the three data lines so um, they need to be cut off from uh, the actual socket. Uh, so I'm going to try and do that. Again, it's very tiny. And I'm, I'm actually wondering whether they need to be cut off at all because um, if you just place it on there and just solder the two outer pins, do you really need to cut off the three in the middle? I don't think so is the answer because what's going to happen is that the, the two outer ones are just the uh, positive and negative, in other words, the power supply. Um, so I don't really see the point in cutting the, the three middle pins off. Anyway, I shall have a look into that. Right, the next stage is to install the two electrolytic capacitors, surface, mount, surface mounts, um, a couple of uh, surface mount capacitors, the voltage regulator which lives there uh, and they go into these uh, locations here. That's the two capacitors, voltage regulator and the two surface mount caps. The electrolytics, um, you'll notice that there is a black band on each one of them and that will show you the orientation you need on the board. You'll see on the board there is a black band there and there. 
and that is the orientation that they have to go into. These, these little surface mount caps, they don't have a polarity issue, uh, only these. And of course the voltage regulator, well you can see the position there of the three connections, one, two, three, and of course soldering the uh, large tab at the top as well. Okay, so I'm going to install those. With the um, uh, mini USB connector, I left the three pins in there. I didn't bother cutting them out. I just soldered the two outer ones. The three in the middle are connected to nothing, so that's okay. And then soldered the tabs down to hold the uh, uh, the mini USB jack in place. So uh, hopefully that will be okay. So I'm going to get these soldered in, and then we'll move on to the main chips, the buzzer, um, transistor, and then a bunch of resistors there, and finally the uh, backup battery holder. Right, well, it's all finished up. Um, get the light on it a bit better. So everything is now installed. I did have a bit of a battle with the uh, surface mount chips um when i was uh, I, I have actually powered this up already and i did have a row of um leds i'm just trying to think which one it was now it was either that either that row or that one uh weren't operating and uh basically i i did have some connection problems with um both of these chips so make sure that you tin the uh connections um extremely well when you um install these surface mount so you get a good connection so that was the only problem I had there other than that everything else went on very very neatly I've got some flux that I need to clean off there which I shall do in a minute uh, with a bit of uh, isopropanol alcohol and a cotton bud which is what I normally do um, just to neaten it up um, so it's just a quick demonstration of how it looks. Um, probably uh, switch the lights off so you can see that it's, it's pink. Uh, very nice pink as well. Have I got this upside down? I think I probably have got this upside down. Um, and let's move this out a bit. There you go. So we've got the day. Happy a birthday. Well, that's very nice of it, except it isn't my birthday. Um, what it is, actually, is the uh, 31st of December 2017, so I'm doing this on uh, New Year's Eve. It's got the temperature display. I don't quite understand that, because there isn't a thermistor. Um, so I don't get that at all. Um, it's showing, uh, you know, it's showing um, the temperature, but... I have absolutely no idea how it's doing that. What is what is able to read the temperature out of that lot? I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, that's that. So it's working. I've got all the LEDs going now. I, just, I did have some problems, but that was just my soldering. Um, all the LEDs work which is great, and um, there are, in fact, a few spares left over. They always, they always tend to give you a few extra um, components in these kits. Let's put the lights back on. Um, so, for example, I've got a few resistors left there, and, uh, as I say, the LEDs, and uh, even a, a spare transistor. But uh, yeah, so the next thing to do is the case. Um, and the case basically um, has a large sticker as a diffuser. Let's see if I can, oh, I'm gonna press the uh, touch sensitive display there a minute. But yeah, there we go. Right, so. Yeah, that's the touch sensitive display buttons there. Very, very sensitive. 
Um, but basically, the I'll put that on there like that. So this is basically a sticker, which goes over. You can see there you go. That's the paper sticker. It's got the backing paper on there, and that will stick over this grid, which is actually black. It's just got some paper protective covering on it. And that goes over the LEDs like that. The sticker goes on top of there. And then you've got the acrylic case. So what I'm gonna do, it's all fairly straightforward, so I don't think you need to see me build that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, sort all of that out and um, we'll see what it looks like afterwards. Right, well, the, the build is finished. Um, let's get a bit more light on that. I know that's gonna wash out the display, but we'll look at that in a second. Um, as you can see, it's sandwiched between um, three, well, actually four layers of acrylic. You've got two clear layers. Um, that one there is a spacer to bring the back plate above the components, as you can see there. Um, oops, I'm clicking away there. Um, and uh, obviously some components like that cap and the, the buzzer uh, stand proud of the... Um, back plate but no big issue and there's also a slot there for the battery the battery is not supplied that's one i had myself it's a cr1220 which seems to be pretty typical of the uh, these kits so there you go yeah so you've got um uh, the uh, spacer layer and the back plate then you've got this black um uh, uh, grid which goes over the leds and then on top of the LEDs, or on top of that black grid, you put what is basically a giant sticker. They actually supply two. This is the other one. And that is to act as a diffuser. I don't like it, actually. I think it, it, it's a bit, a bit too much. It's a bit too thick. Um, and you know, it, it just looks like a, a packing label. Um, that they're using as a diffuser and it, it doesn't quite work but it, it, you know it, it looks okay and then of course you've got an acrylic plate on the front so you know that's it finished so let's put the lights off um, and have a quick look at the display it's um, a very nice pink it looks whiter and brighter on the video um, but um, in real life it's a, a it's a much nicer um, you can adjust the time, obviously, um, the date. Um, there's an alarm setting. Uh, you can have a different type of font for the display. Um, the display, I think, if you go into this, it's um, basically, it says type 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, doesn't seem to do an awful lot as far as I'm concerned. I haven't really looked into that. So time, date, alarm, font, display, and mid up is basically, it gives you the, uh, um, oh, there's the brightness as well. Um, on, off, what's that? No, that may not be bright. Oh, that's, I think that might be certain things like birthday. So it comes up with a message saying happy birthday on your birthday and all this sort of stuff any rate up um so that's basically it um and uh it's a nice large clock i have to say very very nice i chose pink because it's different i've got blue clocks i've got white i've got red i've got green but i thought pink was a bit different and it actually stands out it's quite nice i think in very bright light the pink doesn't work quite as well but there you go um yeah rather like that so that basically is the end of that particular kit, um, and I hope you enjoyed the build. Uh, as I say, it took quite a long time, mainly because of the um, uh, the LEDs and the number of LEDs, so it's a long evening's work. Probably want to do it over a couple of evenings. Do it slowly, do it carefully, particularly the LEDs. Um, spend some time on the surface mount components and do them carefully. Uh, don't allow them to get too hot under the iron and you'll be fine. And there she is. Brilliant. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the vid, and I've got lots more bang good kits kicking about, and some on the way, so uh, I'll be doing a few more of these. 
And like I said, it's the 31st of December 2017, so a very happy new year to everyone. Cheers for now.